Well, praise the Lord, saints. This is your pastor, Bishop Horsey Smith. Hey, I know you're about ready to start your congregational life meetings. I want to be able to greet you first uh, in the name of Jesus. I know it's been difficult for many of you, but uh, let me just tell you from the bottom of my heart how proud I am of so many of you uh, that have really been able not only to, to go through, but to weather this storm with joy and with strength. And tonight I wanna share with you uh, from that thought, mainly about uh, what we must continue to do as people of God. And that is, you know, we must move from this whole mentality that people have of, I wanna survive uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So I've said so many times, I really believe from the Lord that he wants us not only to survive this pandemic, but God really wants his people to thrive. You know, in the word of God, we have so many examples of this, and I wanna share them with you tonight as we move forward uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, someone reminded me about this uh, from a very uh, familiar passage in 1 Kings chapter 19, you can read it. Uh, it's really where the prophet Elijah, uh, under very difficult circumstances, had to deal with uh, the prophets of Baal, uh, idol worshipers, uh, Ahab, who was a wicked king, and, and Jezebel. You may remember uh, that uh, he showed great courage, uh, this prophet of God, this God representative on the earth. God wants the church, I believe, in this day of pandemic to be his key representatives on the earth. And again, he wants us to be an example. We say it's to become salt and become light, and it certainly is. But again, I want you to remember that he is calling for you and I and all of us together by the grace of God, not only to survive, but to thrive. Again, in 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, this prophet Elijah, great man of God, uh, had to face, the Bible says uh, in this passage, over 400 prophets of the grove, but 450 prophets uh, that sat at the feet uh, of Jezebel. Uh, these were people that were indeed the lynch people of evil uh, in the time of Israel. They had caused many in Israel to go back, not to obey the living God, but again, in times of crisis, the people of God step up and stand up. And so Elijah had the courage to stand up. You know the story uh, in that 19th chapter uh, on Mount Carmel, where uh, he was very precise as the person of God in the midst of overwhelming odds, in the midst of evil all around him. This prophet Elijah did not take down. He said, look, if, 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 if God be God, then serve him. And if Baal be God, then serve him. And in a nutshell, he said, in the God that answers by fire, he really is God. You know the story. Uh, he had them create an altar, and the prophets of Baal began to cry out and scream. These prophets of Jezebel and, and Baal saying, oh, Baal, uh, show yourself by fire. And nothing happened. And the Bible said Elijah, in fact, began to ridicule uh, those prophets and saying, maybe he's asleep. Why don't you wake him up? Maybe he's on vacation. But he began to ridicule the prophets of Baal, knowing full well that although he had he was outnumbered, what, 450 to one, he really was in charge because God was on his side. He said, now are you done yet? When they got through their screaming, their yelling about their God, Baal, to answer by fire. And then he had them pour water pots, pots of water on the altar. And then he called down the fire of God. And the fire of God, again, destroyed all the wood and then the Bible says, and Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. What a great victory. But after that, Jezebel, the wicked queen, she sent a letter, a message to Elijah saying, you're so brave, but if tomorrow at this time, if you are not dead like those prophets, then I am not who I say I am. And the Bible says something very uh, difficult to me. It says that Elijah panicked. Elijah began to... I don't know, react to what was around him. He knew that Jezebel was powerful. She was well-loved. She had much resources. When she threatened his life, he began to panic. He began to run. And the Bible says he ran, he ran. Make a long story short. The Lord said to him, Elijah, where are you? What are you doing? And Elijah said, I am being good on behalf of God. I have stood against the prophets of Baal. I've killed them all. And now this woman, Jezebel, is after me, and I'm afraid she's going to kill me. I think she's going to take away my life. He said, I've done all this work, 
for you, God. I'm the only one left. Listen, Church of God, you know that was not true. I want you to know this, that we should not only survive in this pandemic, we should thrive. And again, the difference is a mindset. One mindset is one of a victim. The other is a mindset of a victor. The Bible tells us very clearly, as a person thinketh in his heart, that means what dominates your mind, that's what you think. The way you see the world, the way you see other people, the way you see yourself is based on your own mindset. The word of God comes to really orient our mindsets in a perfect way, to orient us toward the truth. We know what the real truth is, because sometimes, let's face it, we're human. Human nature, when it faces odds, when it faces difficulties, it often wilts. We get nervous. We get anxious. We begin to panic. But God's truth reorients our minds. So when you think that this pandemic is so overwhelming, know this, God is still in charge. I believe that he's going to use this pandemic in part to help the church not only to survive, but to thrive. A survivor is pretty good. Survivor means that you're able to overcome even in the midst of obstacles, but you only exist. You go from being a victim to being a survivor. But I want you tonight to know this. As we start this new series, I want you to thrive in the Lord. I want you to be able to declare that my best days, they are behind me and my real good days are in front of me. I'm sorry, my best days are not behind me. My best days are in front of me. That's not only a survivor, that's somebody who thrives. Paul says, I pray that the Lord will sanctify you totally or wholly. He said, I pray your body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless in the, in the sight of God. It means no matter what the circumstances, God wants you to be blessed, to have life, life physically, life emotionally, life spiritually. What do you mean? He wants you to thrive. So over these next few weeks, we're going to be talking about how to move from being a victim or just a survivor to a thriver. I want you to ask the Lord to help you to be awakened spiritually and to grow and prosper in the Lord. I'm telling you the truth that he's going to show you in the midst of the worst pandemic we've ever seen. In the time when people are panicking, they're frightened, but God's going to show himself strong where? Among his people. You and I together will be able to do that. Let me give you a heads up. I go, already gave you first uh, Kings chapter 19 about what he said to Elijah. Remember at the end of that chapter, he said this. When Elijah said, Lord, I'm the only one left. He said, no, you're not. God said, I have 7,000 who have never bowed their knees to Baal nor kissed his ring. In other words, I've got a complete number. I've got thousands who, despite the hardship, despite what they're going through, they have not given in. They have certainly not given up. For those of you who like the New Testament, let me read you what I think is a New Testament corollary from the Word of God. And it reads like this. Uh, you, you know the passage. Uh, the first one is found in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. It simply says, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. And then finally, Romans chapter 8. Look what he says in the midst of turmoil. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He says, as it is written, Lord, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We, we may be accounted as sleep for the slaughter, but no, in all these things, we are what? More than conquerors through him that has loved us. He says, well, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any uh, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, I look forward to working with you as we move forward throughout this pandemic and move from being a, a victim or survivor to the height God wants us to re reach, that is to become survivors. Not only survivors, but thrivers. Thriving means that you prosper. Thriving means you grow, you develop. Thriving means not only are you blessed, but you're able to be that one that God will use as a conduit to bless somebody else. Just today, 
we're able to give away again uh, from our church because of your commitment to giving and generosity. 300 families received a box of staples, of vegetables, of fruit, of fresh uh, meat. Again, God is amazing. In the midst of a pandemic, people are losing jobs perhaps, losing their income, but the church of Jesus Christ, your church, because of God's commitment and our love to him, is that we're able to help those that are in need, including some of us. No shame in that. It means, again, in the midst of a crisis, we not only survive, but we're going to thrive. I look forward to thriving with you. Hey, we miss you. My wife and I send our love. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Don't panic. Don't be anxious. Don't simply survive, but thrive in Jesus' name. Love you so much.